So let's give this thing a shot. I've never recorded a video before, but why not? So um, this video is the 422 response for No Zombies Allowed, and I have it pulled up in the background here. So I'm going to be scrolling through and finding the direct citations that I've highlighted. So the first one, well, I first like to address the um, kind of like the nature of how the teacher presents his class and how it starts out by saying like the stipulations behind the class and then both of them or not both of them rather but the hypothesis that the students weren't going to be interested in the media class was kind of confirmed when he starts saying as I paused to take a much needed breath a hand went up to my right question yeah when do we get to start using the camera so much for my strategically planned induction introduction so it seems like on the first day of class, as we call in university, syllabus day. So it seems like there's kind of the same thing at a high school or, you know, grade school level. So like the first day is, you know, the boring day and where you just have to go over the policies and everything that's mandatory. So in this, he was trying to make his class entertaining and to try and move away from that, that feeling of this is something that we have to do and to make it interesting so the students get something out of it and they know that it's just not a normal syllabus day so that kind of failed and I can sympathize with them honestly later on down in this, the text on page 94 they were talking about this block of text I can read it real quick and it was in, re, in regards to the Jerry Springer show I don't think they had any respect for that girl, commented Paloma, because when she would talk, they would put her name up on the screen. Underneath it, it would say 13-year-old prostitute, like that was her job. I don't think they told her they were going to do that. Do you think they went on the show thinking that, I'm sorry, do you think she went on the show thinking she would get help? And then the one thing that I wanted to pull out was, I think so, said Sylvia softly. That specific line right there, I think so, said Sylvia softly, really stands out to me. Because it seems like everybody in the class had this idea. And when you're the one person in a class that has an idea that's different from everybody else's, it takes an incredible amount of courage to stand on your own. And in this, this is the perfect example. She's trying to stand up for her view, her rationale. And... She just said, I, I think so, but not confidently because it feels like you have everybody else in the classroom around you kind of against you and thinking that your point is crazy, which is preposterous because, you know, everybody is entitled to their opinion, to their views, and everybody's input is very valued. So, and it also seems like the author or the teacher in this specific segment right here he didn't address that. He didn't specifically either affirm or perhaps invalidate Sylvie at all. He just simply mentioned it like it was part of the discussion. That one line stood out to me even though it was just in the middle of the text. Because, you know, it's happened to the best of us, it's happened to all of us, where we have this opinion, we have this point of view that's different from everybody else's, and it just feels like even though you know this is valid, Everybody else thinks you're crazy. Moving on to the next one. It's a bit lengthy. Um, so there's a specific paragraph. So I'll read the two highlighted parts that I have here. We also examined how minorities are shown many times in stereotypical roles or situations. And women continue to be offered a more limited range of roles than their male counterparts. So this, this shows how they've been moving from topic to topic, um, analyzing media the entire time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they're talking about how some groups of people are, are over or underrepresented and how this continually happens in the media today. So in the society of, of our modern society, rather, you would think that this wouldn't be happening. You would think that we would be trying to move towards a more equal, more socially just, socially just world. And the fact is that we see this in the media every single day. You turn on any kind of news network, 
you could turn on MSNBC, you could turn on Fox News, and I realize that those are two polar opposites. One's very right wing, one's very left wing. But those are just two examples. You could have, as it says here in the text, African Americans, though more visible on TV than in the years past, are still showing up primarily in dippy comedies that are at best caricatures of contemporary black life. Mexican and other minority ethnic groups are seldom shown in any dramatic context outside occasional drug dealer or criminal. It's incredible. I mean, specific. Think of the show Cops. And I'm, you know what? I'm actually, yeah, it, <laughs> it's right down here. Um, the show Cops, you have every single episode, you have white cops, and then you have the majority of the time the people that they're either chasing after, the people that the the show targets are of a minority, whatever that may be. And the fact of the matter is, why are we presenting this on the news? These this is just enforcing stereotypes. This is just enforcing bias and the the segregation and everything that you know as a society in 2014. You would think that we had been been over this and been through this, but the, the fact of the matter is it still exists, yet we, we, we just overlook it. So, I'll move on to the next one now. In closing, Lorena wrote, I would appreciate it if you can answer my letter. Thank you. We never received any response from Fox. So, this specifically, this was when they were, their, I believe it was their final project. Their project was to write a letter to a news network if they felt strongly about something. So, it was, it's incredible. Personally, I have a bit of a bias against Fox News. So, and I mean, to be able to say that you're completely unbiased is just not true. Everybody has a bias of some sort. Every news has a bias. It's, it's impossible to write any form of news or any article journal entry, what have you, and be unbiased. It's just, it's just impossible. Um, so the letter that she wrote was, my friends and I watch your network all the time, but every time we watch your comedy shows, we never see Mexicans or Arabians as the main characters. The main reason why this bothers me so much is because no one really knows what the Mexican and Arabian cultures are all about because they are all shown as bad guys or made fun of. I'm not saying that you're the only network that does that, but you are one of the main networks that everyone watches, and maybe you can change a few things. This is a very valid point. And specifically, for a school child, school a, a, a student, to recognize this, especially in grade school or high school, that's got to say something, you know? Because these people at Fox who are recognized recognized news anchors, recognized producers, journalists, they may very well know what they're doing. But I, I very much think that they don't realize what they're subconsciously or consciously, for that matter, enforcing in society. So while we have all of these stereotypes and everything that is in full swing but not it's it's kind of sitting in the background so the foreground is news headlines everything like you you're gonna be interested in this and you see big text at the bottom of the screen so imagine that in between my two fingers here there was a big headline so that's what your your eyes go to but then the whole point of being in a media analysis class the po whole point of doing an assignment such as this is that you have to look deeper be behind this headline here sorry I'm trying to you know, make my fingers look like a headline. Um, but the whole point is to look beyond that because every time in news, you have the foreground, and then you have the background. So, what are people thinking when they watch the news mindlessly? And then, what are people thinking for these underrepresented groups? And this is what they see exactly in this little paragraph that this that this student wrote. Um, they they're just underrepresented or they're represented in a in a bad or derogatory way when this is the it's just incorrect socially and I suppose socially and statistically that's the word I was looking for 
So, I believe that, oh, I do have one more. So, in regards to the one assignment that the teacher had assigned with the songs, and I think this is very important, where you could choose any song, you have to break it down, and you have to analyze it. So, the one song where Frankie had asked any song, and the teacher responded, yes, any song, but he wasn't prepared for what his student had brought in, which was extremely vulgar and inappropriate for in a school setting. So, this moment just haunted the teacher, and because he never addressed it. It was something uncomfortable, and he just never got around to it, or whether that was conscious or subconscious, he just never got around to it. Um, so, the quote that I've pulled out was, it's a teachable moment that got away. Just one of many that I've knowingly let slip through my fingers. So he acknowledges right here that this was something that was that he has done knowingly. Unfortunately, when a moment like this arises, as uncomfortable as it may be, it's something that needs to be addressed immediately. And in a professional work environment, whether it be the job that I work in personally, whether it be your job as a viewer, whether it be our teacher's job, whether it be anybody in any professional setting for that matter, any employment, it's important that one addresses their problems directly to the person that there's an issue with. And frankly, it's better to address that sooner rather than later. Because what's going to happen is it's going to be on the back burner. You're going to dread it. It's going to haunt you for a while, and then you're going to move on to something else and forget about it. And then eventually it's going to creep back up, and you're going to realize, just like this teacher, that your opportunity is too late. And I believe that he said, um, I'll get to it. One of these days I'll just pull him out of class and we'll talk. But then June came and Frankie was gone. And then just before the quote that I pulled up, the teachable moment quote, I believe it says, let's see, I ride through the back of yard sometimes thinking maybe I'll see him, and that if I do, maybe I'll jump out of the car and we'll hold class right there, breaking down the song lyrics on the concrete sidewalk. That just symbolizes how it's been, you know, eaten away and just like building up inside, so that just further emphasizes that if there's an issue that has to be addressed in any professional setting, in any setting at all, between friends, between relatives, between coworkers, between bosses and employees, it just needs to be addressed. So, let's see. Those were the three quotes that I pulled out. Um, so my questions, I have to say, one of them would be, when you re, when you watch any kind of news network, for that matter, or read an article in a paper. Do you read that article for simply the news aspect and to read about what's going on in the world? Or do you consider that an opportunity for you to look through that article and look for the bias and pull out the little things in that article that stand out, that, that kind of crush the credibility of that news network? And I suppose, let's see, a follow-up question that I would have would be, can you find a difference between the news, um, between a fairly liberal news network such as MSNBC or CNN and that of Fox News? Um, I just realized that this is my right and this is my left and it appears backwards in your video so right wing left wing appears opposite so you know switch those um, so yeah in that in that sense can you find a difference between the quality of that news and then following up on that which one would you rather watch and why so a personal connection to this article is I had a class last semester that was um, it was a global studies course but the main focus of it was media analysis and we were taught to go through everything and critique every single little thing in in the article or in the video that we were watching up on the big screen up here 
and we had to pull it out and, you know, break it down piece by piece and see what was wrong with each thing. Pull out that bias. What makes this credible? What makes this less credible? Because, like I said before, there is no unbiased news networks. So, this connection has made me read through this, and that was why it was it surprised me when I was reading through, and when it said, I think so, I think so, said Sylvia softly, when the student was representing her one point, but she was standing alone and did not feel supported by her, her students. That was one thing that stood out to me, even though it wasn't made blatant, because in this class we were taught to go through and pull out anything that, that was just, that different, that was different or that stood out that somebody may just completely skim right through and just not notice. So another connection, a personal connection that I have is at home we grew up with my stepmother reading the New York Times. And if you know the New York Times, the daily papers are probably about that thick. But then the Sunday paper, and like, I'm not kidding you, it's like this thick. It's like a good five inches thick, and it's heavy, too. So in all of these, they have different sections and everything. And you read through it, and the New York Times seems more credible than the New York Post. For example, and why is that? New York Times, for me, it offers a more global view. It seems slightly less biased than... A re an article in the New York Post, even though they have almost the same names. And the reason why I mention this is because the New York Post seems to write more personal connections, or more, it seems like journal entries. While it is news, it more so seems like the, the person, the author of it, had written it not as an observation, but more as like, here's what I think, and this is what happened. Whereas the New York Times, while, like I said, it is biased because you can't have unbiased news source, is less biased and more geared towards informing the reader. So I suppose in consideration of everything and this article, it, when teaching, it just shows that really your classroom is what you make of it and what you emphasize and how you act as a teacher how you how what you do is going to directly influence your students so I believe that this is a, a good introduction to a first uh, video log and if I go back and edit it it's probably going to take me multiple hours so hopefully first times the charm thanks